Hello everyone and welcome to the paint studio here at Golden Artist Colors. I'm Kevin Greeland and today we're going to continue our discussion of So Flat Acrylics. So Flat Acrylics are a new line of matte acrylics. Last week we talked about um, unboxing the Zing set and the week before we did the unboxing of the Pop set. We had lots of questions about mixing and compatibility. So today we're going to talk about what we're calling mixability. Hello to Montreal, or hello to Montana, hello to Washington, so lots of people jumping in. Again, Kevin Greeland, we're here in the paint studio at Golden Artist Colors, and we're going to be talking about the mixability of so flat acrylics. We have our MAS, uh, which stands for, we always say MAS, but it stands for Material Application Specialist. They are online to also help answer questions for you, so do type those in. All right, hello to Texas as well. So let me go ahead and switch the camera. Hello to Indiana. There we go. So slow, so flat acrylics. We looked at the Zing set last week. And the week before that, we looked at the Pop set. The so flat acrylics, um, comparable to all our other lines of acrylics, they're 100% acrylic polymer. Uh, we use the finest pigments. The new combination of low viscosity, flowing consistency, great leveling, and increased opacity result in a silky smooth paint that dries to a uniform matte surface. So what can we mix with them? <laughs> Lots of different things. So if you remember last week when we looked at this set, we just took the colors and we, we this is the, the so flat color, and we mixed it with so flat white and so flat black. All right, so they definitely, you know, mix well with each other. Let's look at this one. This is our teal in the so flat line. So right here, this cobalt teal, that's this color along the leading edge here. And then what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've mixed that with our heavy body teal, our fluid teal, and then our open teal, and our high flow teal. So let me move that up so you can see those. All right. So I took the so flat matte acrylics, I painted this stripe on this side, and then I made a mixture of the so flat, the cobalt teal, with our teal heavy body, our teal fluid, our teal open, and our teal high flow. And so really all I want to point out is you could have easily also used our cobalt teal, but I went ahead and used the teal just to get a little variation in color there. So you can see that it did impact the color doing each of those mixes. The other thing to note, too, is um, you can see with this teal, if I kind of hold that in the light, the minimal brush strokes, um, they just don't really show up. Um, they just really self-level. The percentage of the mixtures was about a 50-50. I did it with a palette knife, so pretty close to a 50-50 mixture. So you can see with the matte, that the sheen across all of those, so the big thing to remember with the, the so flat matte is it, it is to be a matte surface. So whatever you do or whatever you mix with that paint will impact that matte effect. And so you can kind of see a little bit of the difference in sheen. And this was at a 50-50 mix. And I'm just tilting it in the light so you can kind of see the differences. With the teal heavy body, you can see I was able to retain a fair amount of texture. And you can see a little bit of the brush stroke there. With the fluid, you can definitely see a shift in the sheen. Not as much texture though, because it is a fluid. And then with the open teal, you can see again I was able to retain a lot of the texture from the open um, but again a shift in the sheen from the matte over here 
and the same with the high flow uh, shift in the sheen, um, but a minimal amount of texture. So again, this was a 50-50 mixture between all four of our lines of paint plus the new fifth line of paint, the, the uh, matte acrylic, excuse me. Just checking the questions. I think I'm going to need some SoFlat. <laughs> yes, so it is shipping out to stores. Uh, most stores should have it. You can definitely go ahead and call your retailer and ask them if they have it. Um, and you can look online. So again, this was using the teal. I've also done another one with um, our naphtha red light so we can take a look at that. Let me put the teal one out of the way. Gail says she's sharing this to all her pages. Thank you, Gail. So this one is the um, naphtha red light. So right here, you can tell, hopefully that's the demarcation. This is painted all with the naphtha red light, so flat. And then I used a mixture again of our regular lines of paint. So I did the heavy body here, then I did the fluid, then I did the open, and then I did the high flow, all in the naphtha red with a 50-50 mixture of the so flat. And you can tell, again, impacts the sheen a little bit. You can see the so flat here, nice and flat, but then look at the variation in the sheen. This is the heavy body mixed with the so flat at a 50-50. This is the fluid mixed at a 50-50. And again, you can tell heavy body retained much more of the brush stroke, a little bit of texture, less with the fluid, but again, does impact the sheen. Here is the open. Again, you can retain some of that texture, but you can see that it does um, impact that sheen. And then the high flow as well. So really the ones that are the glossiest um, tend to be the open. Uh, then the fluid, and then a little the heavy body, um, with the high flow being kind of last there. The other thing I've gone ahead and done, um, just to kind of show you how potent uh, this naphtha red light is, is I've mixed a 50-50 mixture with our benzomidazolone yellow, um, again, across all the paint lines, so heavy body and fluid, and then the high flow and the open. And that's this lighter color here. So at a 50-50 mixture, you can see there's not much of a change uh, from that so flat to the benzomidazolone yellow medium. So really a deep saturated color. The wet to dry shift on the um, so flat, there is a little bit of a shift, but it, um, depending on the color, it's fairly minimal. Let's take a look at this one. This is using the cadmium orange in the so flat. That's this area here. And then I've done a mixture uh, down this side, combining it with our Quin magenta in the fluid. Um, so, and this is just the Quin magenta by itself right here. Hello to Sandy. She's in uh, Illinois, and uh, looks like the MAS folks are answering most of those questions. Um, I will remind you, if you have questions, um, we don't get them answered today, email us at help at goldenpaints.com, and I'll put you in touch with our material application specialists. Uh, and you can also go to justpaint.org and read two great articles written by our material application specialists on SoFlat. And today we're addressing the mixability of so flat. Um, so here, cad orange in the so flat, and then quin magenta in the fluid. Um, if I hold this in the light, you can see how shiny that quin magenta is. It's one of our modern pigments. It's fairly transparent. You can see that by looking at those black bars on the container. Compared to the cad orange, you can see is very matte. 
uh, and not a lot of brush strokes is visible compared to the fluid Quin magenta there. Uh, and then all I've done is it just increasingly added maybe about 20% uh, of the fluid to the so flat, and that's this first color. Then a little bit more, a little bit more, and a little bit more. And I did that just to show you kind of the shift um, in sheen. You can tell with the, the uh, cat orange by itself, there's really minimal brush strokes, even with that light kind of raking over the surface. It just has that beautiful matte um, feel to it and uh, very little texture. And then by introducing the Quinn Magenta, which you can see is very shiny and the brush stroke is kind of visible because the color is quite transparent. Um, I just did mixtures here, adding increasing amounts of the fluid. And you can see on this last one where it's a majority of our fluid color, the Quinn Magenta, you can see that sheen coming back. Here at, this is probably about 60% um, of the um, Quinn Magenta. You can see it's still pretty flat. Uh, when I approach kind of that 90% of Quinn Magenta to the Cad Orange, it started getting very shiny. So uh, again, certainly mixable with all of our product lines. If we take a peek at the teal again, and or the naphthol red light you can see all mixable nothing's going to happen when you mix them except for it will change the texture in the sheen a little bit um, so depending on how much of a fluid or heavy body you're mixing will depend on you know how much that sheen changes and you can see that really um, in this mixture of the cad orange with that Quinn Magenta. So you can see just introducing a few drops, maybe 20% of this Quinn Magenta to the Cad Orange. Um, not much of a sheen change, but definitely a color change. And then as we move down, you can see that the color intensifies and so does that sheen. And that comes from the fact that we're using this modern color Quinn Magenta and we're mixing it with the Cad Orange, which is our, the So Flat, so very flat. All right, so that's mixing with all four lines of paint. So yes, you can mix our So Flat matte acrylics with our heavy body, you can mix them with our fluid, you can mix them with our high flow, and you can mix them with our open. Just know that it will impact the sheen, all right? Uh, how about applying those colors over a surface? So that's what we've done here. This is light molding paste on the canvas. And then we've gone ahead and used the, I believe we used pyro red here. Let me pull those up. Yes. So here we use pyro red and the pale yellow in the mat, the so flat. And we've just applied it over a textured surface and did a little blending in the middle. Sandy said she loves that cad orange. I'm a fan too. I'll pop that one back over. And I love the combination of the cad orange with the Quinn magenta. Just get such a variety of color there. Just beautiful. All right. So this is just showing that you can use the so flat. Um, acrylics just like you would our heavy body or fluid and apply them over a textured surface. Let's switch that out and let's talk a little bit about mixing them with other gels and paste. So we have a little board here and hopefully um, you can kind of see this. This is our yellow green in the so flat matte acrylic line. Uh, this is what it looks like here in the container. So flat, matte acrylics, and it is yellow green. All right. So the matte acrylics, more leveling, more opaque, and more matte. Um, we've applied the color just by itself right here. And then I've gone ahead and I've mixed this color, the yellow green. I mixed that with our light molding paste. 
So that's light molding paste, and I mix that one together, and that's right here. So again, not too much of a difference in the change of sheen, a little bit, um, but definitely you can build up texture. And so you'll notice the one thing about the so flat is it will be hard to build up a lot of texture. So here we've uh, built up that texture using uh, a light molding paste, all right? Um, another one that we recommend mixing, and the reason that we recommend some of these is um, not because you can't mix them, it's just that they'll maintain um, that flat um, kind of matte color. So in this case, I've mixed the yellow green with fiber paste, and that one's right here, the fiber paste. Um, again, you can see compared to the color up here, not too much of a change in that matte effect, maybe a little glossier. Uh, again, I'm able to build it up with texture because of the fiber paste. And then the last one, what's in this column, I mixed our fine pumice gel. And that's this one. Again, not too much of a change in the sheen, a little glossier, but not significant. But again, I was able to build up uh, quite a bit of texture. All right. Another one that we'd recommend is our crackle paste. So you can mix the color with the crackle paste. Remember to keep that color on the low end or you'll cancel out the crackle paste ability to crack. Um, but again, I was able to build up some texture. So you can see that in the fine area here, I hope, hopefully the camera can pick up those little cracks. And then where it's thicker, we have the bigger cracks. So able to build up texture. And for the most part, we're talking probably about a 40% mixture of the yellow green with the product just so I could build up some texture. The next one that we're going to look at is the pastel ground. So I mixed the so flat with the pastel ground and I was able to create some texture there as well. That's this one. And then the last two over here are the super matte medium. So I mixed super matte medium with the yellow green and I use the palette knife to apply that. So you can see I got a little texture. Um, and we're also recommending if you want to kind of thin down this color, um, you can use a little bit of water or you could also use a super matte medium. And then the last one here is our color pouring medium matte. Again, I mix that matte acrylic with it. And you can see not much of a difference in the sheen there and not a lot of texture because it is the pouring medium. So if you read those two articles uh, on justpaint.org, uh, a lot of this is covered in those articles. But you can see, um, again, nothing's going to seriously happen when you mix a product with the so flat except for it will change the texture and it will change the sheen. If you're going after the so flat just for that sheer matte effect, then I wouldn't mix it with something that's glossy. Um, and that's this one. Again, back to the cad orange, very matte. Not a lot of light bouncing off of that compared to our fluid Quinn Magenta. You can see how much light is kind of bouncing off of that if I move that in the light there compared to that matte cad orange. Um, and then increasingly so, this first color is still pretty matte. You can tell you know, between these two there's a color shift by just introducing a small amount of the fluid, but not much of a shift in the sheen. And then even moving up to this one, not too much of a shift in sheen, but once we pass that 50 kind of percent threshold, you really start to see the gloss from that modern fluid um, uh, impacting the sheen of that matte. So you will change the sheen when you introduce another product. All right, let's move that one out of the way. And we'll talk a little bit more about mixing. So this was a fun one. This is, oh, I'm dropping my products here. <laughs> this is our um, So Flat uh, Blue Violet is what I painted the background. Just one coat. 
So you can see that, you know, you get fairly good coverage with just one coat. And then um, I use the light molding paste and our fluorescent violet. So the one thing with the soap flat line, all of these are pretty much rated opaque or semi-opaque. The ones that are a little more transparent are the, the, the um, fluorescent colors here, starting with the fluorescent yellow and moving across all of those. And we'll look at the full line of fluorescence in just a moment. But I used the fluorescent violet and I mixed it with the molding paste. And then just used a simple stencil you know, just a simple stencil and a palette knife and applied that over there. That light molding paste, um, you can, is very flat and not much of a sheen. There's a little bit of water on here, but um, not much of a sheen. Um, so light molding paste is another great one to mix. Uh, again, yes, The uh, let me pull up the super matte medium um, would really uh, work best as the closest medium for extending um, the sew flat. It was one of the questions that popped up. So in addition to um, this, where we're maintaining both you know, the sew flat matte color and then the stenciled part is the light molding paste, which is pretty matte already mixed with the fluorescent so flat we really pretty much have matte on matte i did one with a gloss and we want to compare those my table is getting a little busy here so this is using our um let me move that one out of the way temporarily this was using our fluorescent uh pink in in the matte acrylic and in this case, I used the regular gel gloss, so something very glossy. Uh, the, uh, the, the lower portion was painted with the turquoise. So again, the so flat matte acrylic on the bottom, the turquoise. I made a mixture of the regular gel plus the fluorescent pink. And I used a stencil and applied that. So here's the little wave stencil put that on there again made my mixture applied with a large palette knife over the surface so on this one hopefully you can see that uh, regular gel gloss has a bit of a sheen to it um, where the paint itself does not so even though I'm using the fluorescent pink so flat matte acrylic because I'm mixing it with something that's glossy um, you are going to change that sheen so again nothing happens when you mix the products together other than impacting the sheen um, and the texture a little bit so this is the fluorescent pink mixed with regular gel gloss and the fluorescent pink now if you wanted to maintain kind of that matte effect across both, you could use a matte gel. I did the gloss just to show you the difference. Okay. Uh, let's look at, and so we'll compare that. You can kind of see the light molding paste, very flat, not a lot of light moving around on that, mixed with the fluorescent compared to the wave, which you can see that light bouncing off of that. Um, hopefully on the camera there. It looks like it's doing it for me here. Where did I get the wave stencil? Oh my goodness. Um, I will have to look that up. I don't remember. I think, uh, honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> um, you could Google wave stencil and see what you come up with uh, or, or um, you know, email us, but uh, I can't remember. All right, so let's take a look um, now at because we're working with the fluorescent colors here we use the fluorescent pink and we use the fluorescent purple let's take a look at the full line of fluorescence there so this was another little board and what we've done on this one um, so a couple of different things are going on here one I used uh, the so flat white and black to make um, a gray value on both sides and then a black stripe down the middle just to kind of show you the opacity there 
Um, and across the top, I used the cobalt teal in the so flat and just painted a little bar over there. So you can see one pass, um, fairly good coverage. You can see just a little bit of that black line under there. And then I've, we've gone ahead and painted out each of the fluorescents. Um, and what I said earlier about um, all these colors are rated opaque or semi-opaque, the uh, fluorescents are a little more transparent. Uh, and so you can see which ones are a little more transparent. This is just one coat, um, one pass with the brush. And we recommend using synthetic brushes. So here we're just using a very soft synthetic brush, um, painting over the surface, just one pass. Um, and then on this side, just to show you again that you can mix this with almost anything, we've gone ahead and we mixed all of the fluorescence um, and even the teal with our micaceous iron oxide, um, which has kind of a matte gritty feel to it already. It's great for mixing with our regular line of paints, um, as well as creating a nice tooth for colored pencil or chalk pastel. So you could do the same. We used the uh, pretty much a 50-50 mixture of the micaceous iron oxide with all of the fluorescence in the matte line. And you can see increased the coverage capacity in most so you don't see that black as much. Um, and gives you this really nice gritty tooth so you could go back over this with colored pencil or chalk pastel. All right. So that's that. Um, again, nothing happens when you mix these other than you will kind of impact the sheen um, and the texture depending on what you're mixing it with. So if you mix a flat color with something that's glossy, you're going to change that matte effect. All right, and then the last one that I want to show you, we're running out of time. I had a lot to do today to... Um, lots of different examples, is mixing the so flat to get it to flow in markers. So what I've done, um, we're using our titanium white, again, the so flat, and I used open thinner and a little bit of water. And I've, I made that into a mixture, which you can see is in here. I'll open that up. Um, kind of Hopefully you can see that it's fairly runny. And um, I mixed that up thoroughly and filled, uh, poured it into the marker. So um, here's what we're recommending. Um, you could use retarder, but you want to keep that around 15%. Um, and then um, the thinner, again, no more than 25%. Um, kind of a three to one ratio there. Um, you can also mix airbrush medium with it. Um, if you wanted to extend the working time a little bit, you could also use the satin glazing liquid. Um, but again, no, you really want to keep that under 25%. So in this case, I used the titanium white, so flat, the open thinner, and just a small amount of water and uh, mixed it and put it in these refillable markers and we can take a look at um, let me activate that we can take a look um, at doing that so you get you know a fairly nice even consistency there um, i would this is if somebody was asking about the marker yep um, so the marker, so that's using, this was white. And then uh, this is the, these are empty markers. And you can get these in, you know, all different shapes and sizes with different uh, nibs on there. Um, and again, we've just kind of used, keeping that three to one uh, paint ratio in mind, um, use the open thinner with a little bit of water, about 25%. You don't want to exceed that. Um, so maybe, you know, 20%. Um, again, this was ultramarine blue and the titanium white. Um, let me show you that. So again, you know, you can use these in the markers in addition to brushing them on. Uh, go to justpaint.org um, and check those two articles. Uh, 
Are those markers golden specific? No, so these are just generic uh, empty markers. Um, you, again, if you do like a generic um, internet or uh, search engine um, and come up with a whole selection of empty markers, um, they come in different sizes. So I'll put this one here. That was the big one. Here's the white and a smaller. Uh, and then this one is a kind of a chisel tip. So a little bit of a different line. Uh, and so the, again, the thing to keep in mind with these, let me move this out of the way and show you if you can see this in the light. Um, this is the SoFlat uh, black and the SoFlat natural pink. Um, and then I used the titanium white with a little bit of open thinner and a little bit of water. If I hold this in the light, I don't know if you can see that. There's a the smallest, less than like 10% change in the gloss of the white um, compared to the, the so flat. So um, again, you can mix these with any other acrylic product that we make. It's just that they will impact the sheen and or the texture. All right. So we are at 131 right now. Um, again, we were looking at the SoFlat matte acrylics and their mixability. And we were saying that you can grab the two boards and do a little recap here. You can mix the SoFlat acrylics with any of our heavy body paints, our fluid paints, our high flow paints, and our open line of acrylics. Just know that depending on what your mixing ratio is, you can impact the sheen. So if you look again here at the Cad Orange with the Quinn Magenta, you can see Quinn Magenta quite shiny, Cad Orange in the SoFlat not shiny at all. And the first mixture I did, which was about 20% of the uh, fluid Quinn Magenta to the Cad Orange, not much of an impact in sheen there at the 20% mark, but boy, when I got to the 40, you can see that really started to increase the sheen. And then as I move on up um, to where it's almost 80, 90% of the fluid, you can see there is a, quite a bit of shift in that sheen compared to up here where you don't have any of that reflective light bouncing off the surface. So um, to recap, yes, you can mix so flat with everything. Um, it's just that it will impact the sheen or the texture. So do a couple of little experiments. Uh, we use the open thinner to put it in the markers. Uh, again, two great articles on justpaint.org. And uh, you can always email us at help at goldenpaints.com. Let me go ahead and switch the camera. So thank you for joining us uh, here in the studio to go over the SoFlat and the mixability of SoFlat. And we will see you next Friday back in the paint studio. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.